If you guys have been following this channel for a really long time, you know that when I'm on these projects, these assignments, I rarely read the itinerary. And yesterday we were watching that dead goat rugby, dead goat soccer, whatever you want to call it. Kokburu is the real word. And then in the afternoon, I decided to look at my schedule for tomorrow, and apparently I'm doing Kokburu lessons today. <sighs> We're just making our first stop of the day. A place called the Fairy Tale or the Fairy Valley. Is it Fairy Valley or Fairy Tale Valley? Fairy Tale. The Fairy Tale Valley. And my guide Anna back there says it's called the Fairy Tale Valley because if you use your imagination, all these different like pillars of sandstone, they can look like a dragon or whatever your imagination brings. If you don't have an imagination, you can always just use acid. So <laughs> we're gonna explore a little bit here shoot a couple of video clips and then move on. So really cool place and that was a fun drone flight, but it's Sunday so it's pretty busy. Lots of tourists, both locals and foreigners. And I had my drone in the air and another drone came up. If you're about to fly a drone, make sure there's not another drone flying right next to you. Poor form by that guy over there. Um, but yeah, it was a fun drone flight and then uh, now we're heading to the festival. Actually, to be honest, I'm not really sure what it is. On my itinerary it says Kokburu lessons but then I'm hearing that we're just watching another game, um, which will be fun as well. I don't really feel like I need to try the sport, but it would be fun to try it, but I don't feel like I need to try to. So if we're just watching it, I'm totally cool with that as well. And yeah, I guess we're headed that way now. We just arrived at the Kokburu uh, pitch, as you might be able to tell if you watched yesterday's episode. These are the goals set up. You've got one goal way over there with the, with the tires around it, and you've got another goal over here. The game is all about getting the dead goat into the hole at the end. So I'm not really sure what the plan is now, but I think some players are about to arrive. I saw some horseback people heading this way, so um, yeah. We'll see what happens, but it's it's a hot day today again. Let's see if I get this nose and this hole in my hat sunburned a little bit more today. So I just learned the plan and it's interesting. The goat's here, but it's alive. And uh, we're gonna kill the goat, or they're gonna kill the goat. And it's gonna be a bit hard for me to see, but I think at the same time it's important. I think it's part of the ritual, part of the tradition, and you kinda have to watch that stuff. So um, viewer discretion advised. And then maybe I'll, I'll put a little link here, an annotation or something to tell you when you can watch again. So the goat's dead, and that was maybe even harder to watch than I expected. But it's done now, and they're taking the head off the goat, and then sealing it up, and then they're gonna play the game, and then afterwards, we are actually gonna eat the goat. So um, from what I know now, sorry, a little bit shaken up. Um, from what I know now, 
um, they're going to play the game. And then if I want, I'm going to jump on a horse and, and maybe try. So um, things are going to get better. We're going to play now the game. They're going to they're gonna jump on the horses now. And, uh, and we're going to play the game. And I'm going to get some shots for you guys. So as I said yesterday on the episode, it kind of turns into rugby a little bit. There's like a scrum around the goat right now as they're all trying to pick it up. And they don't want to just pick it up. They want to pick it up in a way that they can have like a clear cut run at one of the goals. Team one already scored. And yeah, it's going. So the yellow team just scored to tie things up. It's 1-1 now. I'm going to actually put away the vlogging camera for a second or a couple minutes and pull out my 70 to 200 millimeter lens and try to shoot some action shots for the photography types out there to do this type of shot. I'm actually gonna put a grad ND filter on to hold in some of the light on top. And then I'm gonna shoot a really fast shutter speed as well, like one one thousandth, just to hold the action in. And I might also slow down the shutter speed to like one sixtieth and try to get some like panning shots, some movement shots. So let's get some photos. So yesterday's game was kind of put on as a nomad game, it was kind of put on for tourists, and to be honest, it was a little bit soft compared to this. These guys went hard. These guys like crushed into each other, or I should say the horses did most of the crushing. I kind of feel bad for the horses as well as the goat, to be honest. Uh, they want me to try, and I'm not the greatest horseman at all, but I'm gonna jump on a horse, and they're gonna put the goat on the ground, and they're gonna see if I can grab it. I don't think I'll be able to. Anna's got my GoPro, and she's gonna try to film from a distance. It's one of those things that you wish you kinda had a videographer with you all the time so they could film things like this, but we're doing what we can here, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to grab the goat, but we're gonna try. So they tell me that to hold the goat on because the goat's heavy, when they ride they actually like go between the leg and the horse and pin the, the, the goat in and that way they can ride or sometimes they just chuck it on their lap but usually that's how they do it, they pin it between their leg and the horse. They also told me that the goat weighs like 45 kilograms so not a light goat. And now that the game's over the field turns into a cow pasture. the game's over we've driven into like this beautiful valley here these valleys in Kyrgyzstan are just incredible and I'm told eventually if you keep following this valley it takes you to China I mentioned that we were eating the goat we were gonna have a goat barbecue after the game first we're stopping at these hot springs that are actually inside a yurt I guess So we arrived at the Kyrgyz house where we're having lunch. 
The goat's just cooking in there. I was gonna say I felt bad about eating the goat, but to be honest, I actually think I feel better about eating the goat rather than just kind of like killing it for sport and then letting it like just be there. Um, I think I feel better about actually using it and eating it. Kind of like if you're um, hunting just for sport, for trophies. I'm not really cool with that, but if you're hunting for, you know, for food and for nutrients, that's, I'm all right with that. Um, traditionally, they'd cook the goat with like potatoes and other vegetables in the ground, underground with hot stones, but right now they're doing it in, the, in this oven. And probably shouldn't say this, but I guess maybe our, um, our football match with the goat tenderized it, maybe? The goat lunch was delicious. Big thanks to the family here. Um, and now we're heading back on the road, heading to Caracol. So I made it here to Caracol, which is like the center, the hub of uh, tourism really in Kyrgyzstan for, for a lot of things, especially trekking. So from now on for like the next two weeks, I'm doing treks. Some of them are like day treks, like tomorrow I'm going on just a four hour trek in the middle of the day, and I'm doing like three day overnight treks as well. And they're all kind of based here in Katakul. And I'm excited to be here. Um, before I end this vlog, I kind of just wanted to talk quickly about, about uh, Kokburu and about playing a sport with a dead goat. I think it's really important for journalists, and I think people in general, to try things without judgment. I think it can be really easy for us to say like this is animal abuse or this is like crazy or this is just wrong. You can say things like that pretty easy when you see people playing a sport with a dead goat, chucking around a dead goat. But at the end of the day, it, it's their tradition. It's their culture. Would I prefer them play it with a bag of soft potatoes or something like that? Absolutely. And I think that that's the evolution. I think eventually that's where it goes. And it's really easy for us in the West to judge because we don't see things so raw. We don't see things so crudely. There's a reason in American football they call the football a pigskin because it's made with the skin of a pig. Footballs that they use in Europe, the soccer ball as we call it in North America, is often made with leather, again from cows. But because we don't see it in its crude form, it's really easy for us to judge it. But if we were throwing around a pig, a little tiny baby pig, it might seem abusive. Or if we were kicking around a little baby cow, it would seem abusive. But in its raw form, it just seems more raw. And it's the same with food. I think that it's really important for you to see where your food comes from. Because it's really easy not to see it as a living object when it's on your plate in the form of a chicken breast. But when you see that chicken, being killed or that goat being killed, it just becomes more real. And I think that if you're gonna eat meat, that you have to also see that process. I think that's really important for people to see. I think that adds a connection to um, the cycle of life. I think it's also really important in sustainability because it helps you realize that that product that's on your plate, on your dinner plate, wasn't just, you know, it didn't just, pop up. It was something that was developed. It was something that grew. It was something that lived. And I think that you would respect your food a lot more if you saw it being killed. I think food waste in general is something that's really um, troubling to me. So I think North American viewers, for example, might have been a little bit appalled by the goat soccer, but they ate the entire goat. They, nothing went to waste at the end of it. Whereas I've been on cruise ships and I've been in restaurants where people just chuck out insane amounts of food because I don't think they have the same respect for it because they haven't seen it as a living object. I, they haven't seen it being killed and they don't have that same value to it. So on one end, it seems kind of primitive here to see that happening, but on the other end, it's also very real and it adds that realness and rawness that I think we kind of need in our world to have more of a sustainable world and to respect our food and our environment a little bit more. So 
it's a kind of a, a tough, not a dilemma, but it's a tough situation to kind of analyze. And it's been an interesting day for me. Um, it was tough watching the goat being killed because it was, it was living right there. And then it just like, the knife just like took its life and it was like screaming and the blood, oh, it was, it was tough to watch, but I think it's something important. And I think I, I would highly recommend all of you to go out and if you're a meat eater, to go out and, and see your food being killed and seeing how it's processed. Yeah, I guess that's my uh, little bit of reflection today. So uh, I will see you guys on tomorrow's episode. And yeah, I guess that's it from here in Kyrgyzstan today. Peace.